but it's come around to our turn again. Before we deliberate, I thought it'd be nice if we took a look at uh, what's changed on the demography cards and on the board. So the only uh, board change, we'll start there because it's the most simple, is um, USR Local moved a unit down here to uh, just off the coast of India, um, or what someday will be India, I think. Um, it's important to track where he is because he's currently on the Arak cow space, which means he can he can he has the best chance of domestication. The Arak cow is important because it has double pluses, which gives it a better chance of succeeding on this chart here. Um, we're playing with the optional rule. Well, maybe I should go as to why this this optional rule exists, and I'll tell you the optional rule. Um, Domestication is important in this game because it, it's the way you get the first, the easiest way, the most surefire way that you, and the earliest way, you can move up to to this first step on the the energy infrastructure track. All the players have energy as one of the requirements in moving up in ages. Um, it's it's one of the more important. Well, I mean, all of these tracks are important but energy is probably one of the more important ones and so this first one can be a major bottleneck because there are certain um, animals are definitely much easier to domesticate than others so for example um, USR local has a unit by the R at cow that's by far the easiest because has a double plus that moves it up here um, Pegasus's unit is by the black rider black rhino and virtual zebra those are good to domesticate after you've already domesticated because they give you a minus and here if we look at the chart you have to have energy one to make use of the minus but those those would be good for um, upping my military power if I wanted to uh, the only real good spot I have is the civathair there which is a straight roll I'd have to roll a four or higher it looks like to domesticate that um, which might be something for me to do this turn we'll see um, I, I would like to domesticate the giraffe. But anyway, so the optional rule, because of that bottleneck, the optional rule is that you can, I think, in era two, if you're neighbors with someone who it has that first energy infrastructure, you can essentially rustle up some of their their animals that they spent um, thousands of years, or I don't know how long, domesticating, and get move up that infrastructure track. So it keeps it, it makes it so there's a little bit of a lag if you don't domesticate directly. But you still, you're not going to be held back um, in era. I guess the the dark ages of era two, which can, which I've seen happen in this game without that optional rule. So it's important for me to keep track of where USR local is. He's right there. I could, hmm, if I could get to this hex here, I could be his neighbor. But that's, pr but then he would be the Arak cow. So no, he'd have a metropolis there. I wouldn't be his neighbor there. Um, I don't know if there's anywhere I could be to be his neighbor. Is she? Well, I could figure that out later. So that's what's going on, on the map. Um, down here, there's some interesting card play. Uh, our Hobbit, he got the immunology. I think the Hobbits need immunology to go forward, so that makes sense. He's the first one who's anything other than the beginning on our infrastructure track. And most interesting to, not to me, but to my group, because those of you who know me know that I don't find boating interesting. Um, which is kind of funny that I'm the cro magnons because cro magnons they need to move up the, the maritime track in order to advance for some reason. Um, I guess because they're curious. Anyway, he, he played that raft card. So one option for me would be to take that card. Um, I wouldn't be able to play it yet, however. So that's another interesting thing out there. Um, oh, another interesting thing. Wolf Corbett is, a, is very close to being in Era 2. Um, I think he's thinking because he's near, near to, and I gotta be careful what I say about him because I guess he's, he, he watches these videos sometimes, um, but that's okay. He's near USR local, so he could, you know, even if he doesn't get that energy infrastructure, he, he, I think he's thinking he can get it off of USR local and USR local does because he's got the R cow. And he's also near the giraffe. He could, he could try for a natural action next turn. We'll see what he does. Right, so now it's time for our government to meet and decide what they want to do. Um, we have two innovation actions, um, but three people, right? Now we have Pegasus and Ka, as in Cat. Um, they are both map units right now, so they're kind of the, the people people. And then we have our um, little red up there who is an elder. Now I think uh, a good way to divide it up is little red gets an action. He gets to decide what one action is, and the people get to decide another. So these two are going to have to decide on something together, and he gets to choose his own action. I think 
it's kind of a f twist maybe that the these two are going to decide their action first so that the people are actually leading the elite rather than vice versa but the elite has a little bit more power i don't know if that's if that's fair or not and then i think i might give them both population actions so they're going to each get to decide one of the population actions and you know as the numbers change you know of elders and populations and we have different personalities maybe there will be different um different sorts of i mean there'll definitely be different ways that we have to just to divvy up the actions you know, maybe all of them will be decided by committee, but I think right now I'm going to do it that way. Despite the separation of our innovation powers, it is it ended up being somewhat of a group decision. Um, basically, there's there's two different innovation options right now. You know, uh, barring the um, barring silver backing, um, just cause, ah, none of us want to start the game that way. Um, and those two options are either uh, a blind draw, taking the raft, right? You could also take another card. Um, this group, though, they're into the raft. They want to move. They want the raft, even though they won't be able to use it right away. Um, and so, you know, given that they want the raft and the other action is going to be a blind draw, it makes more sense to do the blind draw first. So they kind of all agree that they're going to do the blind draw and then um, he'll be be taking the raft for them. Then, depending on what the blind draw is, because the blind draw could be something that they don't want to have to play. Because the raft, obviously, they're going to have to save until they can encephalize their, their hand, which is their neocortex right there. Quick point of information, there's going to be some time passing in between this and um, when I actually get to do my second innovation action, because whenever you do a blind card draw, you have to input it into the forum and then wait for, the, the, for Pablo to send you what card you got. Um, or in this case, I have to input it into the form and then I have to wait for Pablo to, to show me what card it got before I can do the next thing. Alright, and our card just came in the mail. It's a hafted thrusting spear. Very nice, very appropriate for taking the raft. So we, uh, everyone was pretty unanimous. So we got excited and just kind of uh, went ahead and ransacked that raft there from, um, from Peking Man's discard pile. Um, that's going to allow us to encephalize our, our neocortex, which, as you recall, is what we need to get the rafting. Then we're going to be pretty much all set, um, with the exception of getting our energy up, to move, move quickly into the Golden Age once we're in Era 2. We'll have what we need. We'll have a little bit of insurance from the, the metallurgy, and burying it underneath the raft card will make it so less likely that someone else will pick it up. Um, not that we, we want to go all war bunny or anything, but it's nice to have a a bit of copper on your side just in case but really the 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 hand encephalization is what we're looking for now this is going to have some some costs okay for one there's a chance we might go into chaos um but the um the two population actions would be good right now for some repositioning we'd like to do on the board so we're going to risk that chaos perhaps lose the rest of our turn but Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and play this, move ourselves up to the Copper Age, and encephalize our neural cortex, and then follow that up with this um, raft, and that'll move us up here. Maybe not so wise. It's, it's good to keep your, your demography in check, but that's what we're going to do. And our people have moved. Pegasus has moved down here to the southern tip of Africa. Um, and then Cat, as in Cat, she had a child, and the child went one, two, three, four, five, over here to the finger millet heft hex here. Now, you might think that that's a dangerous uh, space because it, it'll turn into water, uh, thereby drowning uh, the new baby, which will be a new person to put on our board. We'll see who that is in a second. Um, but that's actually less likely than this becoming um, inhabitable uninhabitable jungle and this turning into desert. So of the spaces here, this is the safest. Also puts her in a clear shot to getting near um, getting near USR local should he um, successfully domesticate some animals and we need to uh, we need to get some some animals for ourselves. So that's where things are going. We're, we're pretty, you know, I, I feel happy that we have three units in Africa here, that we have three units off of our population track. We're getting a bit ahead of ourselves, however. We, you know, our innovation is stuffed up. We need to get some fecundity decreases next. We kind of, um, 
they they were so anxious to get that that infrastructure up because of their let's do it mantra that you know we're not really we're not really taking care of ourselves it's kind of um uh, irresponsible growth I'm, I it could be you know but if, if we can play catch up and um, get our brains cleared again things might not be so bad alrighty let's finish things off with a character draw and we'll get this one ready to go because our turn is over not a bad turn I think we you know we left ourselves open to some some future problems um, maybe not something I would have done had I not been working with this particular committee but this is what they decided, and I don't always think that I'm the best player. So here we go, let's see. Oh, I've played with her before, giraffe. Um, and that's, oh man, that's very, there's a giraffe in Africa, which incidentally is a, a, a really uninteresting, well, might vaguely interest you. Sorry, I'm going to sit down here about giraffes in this game is every time, pretty much every time I play with other people, I oftentimes end up being the crow magnets, which I am this time, uh, which was a random draw. But I like being the crow magnets for whatever reason. Um, but every time I, I am there, I'm, I oftentimes um, domesticate the giraffe. And then pretty much every time I play the city, the metropolis that I've placed in Giraffertin, or whatever I call it at that particular time, um, sinks beneath the sands as the, the savanna changes into desert. Um, so I don't, I don't know that I'll get the draft this time. Wolf did a, a, an interesting move moving down into Africa, but maybe. So Giraffe, she's a regional makeup artist. Um, she'd like to eat her way out of a chocolate vat, um, which, you know, I like chocolate. I like re really dark chocolate myself, but too much of it, man. I, I don't think it's that good. Um, it's good in, in smaller quantities. But maybe she really likes it. Um, I, I like the, the, the notion of her, her neck sticking out of that chocolate vat. I think that's a fun, fun image. Um, she doesn't always like people. That's an unusual fact, she thinks. But I, I don't know. I don't always like... I don't think... I, I just kind of assume most people don't always like people. But yeah, maybe, they do. maybe they do. Or maybe they feel like they sh they're supposed to. I don't know seems like kind of a guilt thing, but I, I think she would find if she really got to know other people that she's not alone in that fact. That's just a guess. Um, she's cheap. She, she hates cheap and prejudiced people, or that's her pet peeve, um, which is maybe those are the, the people she doesn't like. Um, she'd like to meet Al Pacino. Personal motto is give people the benefit of the doubt. Uh, she's most proud of her flowers. Uh, reputation in high school is the shyest cheerleader. And three words that describe giraffe are honest, sincere, and fun. Um, I think I actually do have a giraffe little figure. I don't think I have three of them. So I'll have to spend, maybe I'll give her like a African animal theme. I, I definitely have enough, enough little animals for that. Um, I'll have to look through my, my box.